All right, now remember back when, I'm kind of up close, I'm sorry. It's a lot of face. Remember back when I said that something about <clears throat> the price for homes are, you know, they were dipping, right? Um, and I had even said that, you know, Seattle had went through this constant decline of the last few months in terms of home prices. And a lot of people were holding on to their homes and home prices dropped by double digits. And in some cases, triple digits uh, for some homes. And so a lot of people were saying, is there a bubble in Seattle? You know, once that documentary came out talking about uh, Seattle is dying, <clears throat> a lot of people were questioning, questioning if that is very much true. And I think that what they're really hinting to is <clears throat> there are certain parts of Seattle in terms of the fabric and the things that people know the city about, that part is dying. However, there are many other avenues in the city that are still definitely growing. When we're looking at population, obviously the city is growing tremendously, not as fast as it was, but still growing. Um, when it comes to families, it's growing. It just made the news today that there's now 100,000 children that are in the city of Seattle, the first time it's ever hit that mark. Um, so the city is not dying. The home prices started to take a dip only because of a couple of different things. One, I think that they were just overpriced. When we're talking about homes and apartments, all of that stuff was overpriced. When we're talking about the amount of new condos and apartments and things like that, it the city is overbuilt, to be honest with you. Overbuilt, overpriced. So everything's going to start coming down. And then you have the cold weather uh, and, of course, the rainy season. So people aren't going to be really buying at that time. And I said, I don't know if there's really a price bubble. I don't think so because it's just not long enough. And there wasn't this, it was a fall, but it wasn't like a plummeting death spiral. But <clears throat> it started to pick back up. Now, in Tacoma, we did have a little bit of a dip. Remember I said I lost, you know, a couple of thousand off the house. That was in terms of profit. And it did take a little bit of a, of a dip, but now it actually has rebounded. Not only has it rebounded in Seattle in terms of just the home prices and that type of thing, apartments are still kind of low. I mean, not low, they're still expensive, but they're lower than they were. Home prices are now starting to go back up again. Here in Tacoma, they're going up pretty fast. Now, I have told folks, if you're going to buy a home, this was maybe a month or so ago, maybe two months ago. If you're going to buy a home, now is probably the time to do it because basically prices at that point were low. Don't know how long they would stay low, but they were low, lower than what they had been. And if you're going to buy something, you might want to do that because there's two different things you have to look at when you're look. I should say more than two things, but there's several different things you have to look at when you're looking at Seattle versus Tacoma. Seattle is always going to have the lure of the city. There's so many different tech jobs there. There's so many different things to do. It is a, even though crime is starting to go up, Crime is still relatively low when you're comparing it to other big cities. Uh, the quality of life, even though it's taken a little bit of a dip for Seattle standards, is still a much better quality of life, arguably, than some other cities in the country. So when you couple that with the weather, it depends. Some people don't like the weather because of the rain, but when we're out of the rainy season and the gray skies, typically it's pretty beautiful around here. And of course, there's a lot of act outdoor activities to do and things like that. So Seattle is really becoming more of a world-class city. Um, and so you're, you're always going to have people coming here. So home prices are going to fluctuate. Amazon doesn't determine everything. And there's rumor that Amazon's going to really technically move its world headquarters over to Bellevue, nearby Bellevue. I don't know if that's going to happen. But even if it did, it's still not going to really affect the housing market in Seattle. Amazon is entrenched into this area. Microsoft is entrenched into this area. And you're starting to see other companies actually grow as a result. With that said, only bigger companies are going to really and truly do, uh, I think, are going to be able to make Seattle home in the future. And I say that because medium and bigger companies. The reason why I say that is because 
the starting IT folk, the folks that are just now trying to start their own company, Seattle is great in terms of just being there. Um, you have a whole lot of access to a lot of different things, but when it comes to cost, it is so expensive. And when you add into all the other things in terms of having an employee in King County, it's pretty expensive. You can take two duplicate houses, the same exact square footage, the same everything, an identical twin house, and you can have it in Pierce County and one in King County. And the one in King County is going to be by far more in terms of if you're trying to buy it than the one in King in Pierce County, just because it is in King County. You can be out in the, there is farmland in King County, believe it or not. And even farmland there is going to be by far more than it is in Pierce County. So as a result, just even in those terms, Pierce and Tacoma, Pierce County and Tacoma are a much more attractive option for people who really and truly want to live here, but they can't shell out six, seven hundred thousand dollars for a home or a property. In Tacoma, three hundred and thirty thousand or so is going to be probably about average, and for that, you're going to have a lot of the bells and whistles that you're needing. You don't need to do a lot of updates and all that type of stuff, remodeling, unless you really want to. Typically, a house for that price in uh, Tacoma is going to do you pretty well. Now, that price has went up a little bit because just a few months ago, it was probably in the low 300s, 310s, 315s. That was when I was saying people need to probably buy a home. It's starting to creep back up. Our house now is worth 100000 actually a little over $100,000 more than what we paid for it. Now, remember, it went down under that a little bit. Now, it's worth $100,000 more. And we're just now in the middle of April. It's April 14th or 15th. So over the summer, you're going to see prices go back up again, probably for homes and apartments in Tacoma. Now in Seattle, I don't know about apartments. They probably will stay kind of stagnant, but home prices are going to go up. Maybe not as fast as they were, but here we have a whole lot of room to catch up. Just for the fact of being in Pierce County, it's a cheaper county to live in than it is in King County, even though it, it's just crossing county lines. And also, when it comes to the amenities that are being added to the city, that counts for something. You're seeing in Tacoma a lot of development in certain areas. Obviously, downtown is where you see a lot of development, and it's really noticeable. There are probably over two dozen apartment developments going on right now in downtown. So the bulk of the development and growth you're seeing is right there in downtown, but that's not the only place. Because we're building the BRT line, you're seeing basically down along uh, where the BRT line route is, you're seeing development, right? So you're seeing people buy early because the BRT line's a few years off, but a lot of the time to buy is now because property owners can only sell what the market supports. And right now, those areas are pretty cheap. Along Pack Avenue here, property there is pretty cheap. So you're able to buy at today's prices, even though you know that they're going to actually build a BRT system down the middle of this, connecting not only Spanaway and Parkland, but all into downtown Tacoma. So along that area, you're going to start seeing a lot of development, and you can see that. I drove over there the other day, and you're seeing uh, not only apartments being plopped in different areas, but you're also seeing offices being built uh, along Pack Avenue. And there's other things that are going to be coming in the future. Um, they're just going through the, the planning phase and approvals from the city. But you're seeing different areas start to develop. There's areas near Tacoma Mall that's going to be start developing soon. So to, because of all those things, it correlates to the value of homes. Homes that are going to be close to the BRT line, you're going to see the price go up more so than some of the other areas. When you look at the light rail line that's being extended into Hilltop, that boosts up the price of everything in that area. That area actually has a lot of commercial space, but it also has residential. You're going to see the prices go up. So you're seeing all these improvements. You're seeing all of the development. I talked about Top Golf. Top Golf, more than likely, 90% chance is going to be coming to Tacoma. I mean, it's pretty much in the final stretch. So given that, and all of the other development that's going on right downtown, downtown is going to be where a lot of the, the expenses, believe it or not, probably for the first time ever. You're seeing apartments now, and we're not even studio apartments. We're talking those micro units, 
So they're kind of, they're studio, but they're smaller than what you would think of a studio. And they're going for $1,300. It's pretty expensive. So you're seeing the price of apartments here go up pretty fast and pretty high because of all of the development that's going on. And also because we have a lot of room to catch up. Seattle is a little bit more pricier in terms of apartments, but not by much when you're looking at some of these apartments. And some of the older units are getting a lot of people move into them because they can't afford some of the other things. And so some of these places are having a waiting list. It's never really happened here like that. In Seattle, they're used to that. Now we're starting to see waiting lists down here because people are flocking to some of the more affordable places that are not in slash and stab neighborhoods. But they're going to some of these affordable places because everything else is going up. Home prices are going up. Do I think it's still a good time to buy a house? Yeah, I would say in the next couple of months, probably would be the honey spot, the sweet spot. Because otherwise... You're going to have to probably wait next year during the cold, rainy, wet season. Prices may take a dip again or they may not. The year prior to this one, they did not. They continue to go up. This particular year, for some reason, there was a dip. And I think that that is kind of the cause and effect of what happened in Seattle. Seattle had a correction. So it started to correct all over the place. But now you're seeing a trickle effect. You're seeing the prices down here just go up quick. In terms of houses and apartments, and even down in Thurston County, which is Olympia, you're starting to see home prices go up, and you're starting to see apartment prices go up. Similar to what it was in Tacoma just a few years back. I mean, we're not talking, I would say less than five years ago, you're seeing those prices now down in Olympia and Thurston County. To keep it into perspective, from Olympia to Seattle is about 30 or 60 miles. So 60 miles away... And you're starting to see prices in Olympia go up quite a bit more so than what they've seen before. Not only that, but you're seeing it over in Kitsap County as well. Because you, when you look at Kitsap County, they have a really good model that they're doing in terms of providing fast ferry service over to Seattle. So they don't have to deal with a lot of the infrastructural costs. They just basically purchase ferries. It takes people back and forth to Seattle. And as a result, you're seeing a lot of people move to that area because it's a lot easier. Nice communities. And so now you're seeing prices there go up as well. So pretty much in any of the counties around here, Kitsap County, Pierce, King, Snohomish County, which includes Everett, you're seeing prices go up. Some of them go up a little bit faster than others. Your, your biggest bang for your buck right now is still in, still in Pierce County. Even in Everett, it's a little bit more pricier in terms of homes. Not by much than down here in Tacoma. But in Tacoma, you get more of a city vibe than you do up in Everett. In Kitsap County, the prices there are kind of similar. Maybe a little bit less in certain areas. But again, you're still getting more of a city vibe here in Tacoma. And then when we're talking about Pierce County, it's a good spot in terms of prices. Prices are still in the three early 300s. But the cheapest spot right now is in Thurston County. So a lot of people will probably work here in Tacoma, for example, but live down in Olympia or in Thurston County. It just kind of depends on your situation. A lot of people will ask me, where should I live? What should I do? And I say, live as close as you can to your job. And if you can't afford to do that, then your best bet is to look and see what is the transportation options. <clears throat> I say that because it's becoming more and more difficult for people to use vehicles here. Um, Seattle is looking into making some of the roads downtown into toll roads. A lot of people don't want to do that. You're seeing price increases in parking and things like that. So it's becoming more and more challenging in terms of Seattle. Tacoma, not so much. But <clears throat> if you work downtown you're going to start seeing a lot of issues with parking. There's a lot of parking constraints. The reason for that is because in downtown Tacoma, it's basically, you don't have to provide any sort of parking. So I can build a thousand unit apartment complex and have no parking. So you're seeing a lot of apartment complexes. Some of them will add parking, but it's not enough to cover the amount of units that they have. And then when you add to that the number of workers that work downtown that don't want to pay for parking, you add in a lot of the University of Washington Tacoma students that go down there every single day, the thousands of students who, because keep in mind, that's more of a commuter campus. Not a lot of students live on University of Washington Tacoma. A lot of them commute in. So when you add that in and all those people try to park for free, 
taxes. They don't want to pay either. You're getting less and less and less parking. And then some of the areas close to UWT where people park is being developed and turned into apartments and things like that. Brewery Blocks is a good example of that. So that whole entire section that now has free parking, eventually that's going to go away. That's happening all over the city. The parking garage that is used by Sound Transit, which is free parking, that gets packed full. And there's no plans to expand that. And it's free parking. But <clears throat> anyhow... Just letting you know, in terms of the home prices, I know this video is kind of all over the place, but I wanted to cover it. In terms of home prices, they're definitely increasing here. They're going up quite a bit. People ask me time to time to do videos like this in terms of talking about the market um, because I get a little bit of information from different places and different people and different sources. So I can tell you just kind of a little bit that it seems like they're definitely going to be going back up again. I don't see there a dip, there's going to be a dip anymore in the next few months. That could change you know, at the end of the year. But as of right now, it seems like everything is going back up again. So keep that in mind. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you. Take care.